I stated in my video about three phase current, Galileo Ferraris and Nikola Tesla independently and simultaneously discovered two phase electricity and the two phase motor that were, according to Tesla, quote, identical almost to the smallest detail. So how did these two men come up with this amazing discovery? That's what this video is all about. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. Let me start with Galileo Ferraris in 1884. At the time, Ferraris was a 37 year old physics professor and was the president of the Electricity Exposition in Turin, Italy. This is important because in September 1884, at that fair, a Frenchman named Lucien Gallard and his financial backer, John Gibbs, demonstrated how they could transmit electricity very long distances, 30 kilometers or 20 miles from a waterfall at Lanzo to Turin at very low loss. This was only possible because they transmitted the electricity at very high voltage and low current and then used what they called a secondary generator, or what we would now call a transformer, to change AC electricity to lower voltages and higher current to use safely for electrical systems. Ferraris was impressed and gave them an award from the Italian government. Then in January, 1885, Ferraris conducted his own studies and published a paper on the topic. Ferraris' results were so impressive that if it weren't for his high standing in science, he would not have been believed. However, his report made clear to at least one author at the time that, quote, as far as alternating currents are concerned, the question of distributing electrical energy over a large area from a central station has here found a satisfactory solution. Ferraris knew that this transformer and the superior transformer made months later by the ZBD group made AC more viable than DC for long distance electrical transmission. But he knew as well as anyone that one of the problems with AC is they didn't have a motor or a meter. Then sometime in early 1885, Ferraris was teaching about the polarization of light and he was inspired to make the two phase motor and generator. See, Ferraris knew from the equations of James Clerk Maxwell that light is an electromagnetic wave and the direction that the electric field is vibrating in is called the polarization of the light. If the electric field vibrates horizontally, it's horizontally polarized. If it vibrates vertically, it's vertically polarized, etc., etc. Ferraris also knew that if one combines horizontally polarized light and vertically polarized light, that is in phase, gets bigger and smaller at the same time, then one produces diagonally polarized light. However, if one combines horizontal light and vertical light that is 90 degrees or a quarter wave out of phase, then the result is a wave where the electric field moves in a circle or circularly polarized light. In other words, through optics, Ferraris knew that if you combined light that was vertical with light that was horizontally polarized, if they were 90 degrees apart, you would get circularly polarized light. And he decided to try to mimic this with AC electricity. Ferraris said that in August or September of 1885, he built a hand crank generator with two separate coils, A and B, so that each set of coils got the same current with the same frequencies, but only differed in phase when they increased and decreased in time. Ferraris then put these coils around the disc and the two phase current in the coils induced current in the disc and then Ferraris was delighted to find that the forces between the current and the disc and the coils caused the disc to spin. However, Ferraris didn't think it would be very powerful, so he mostly just demonstrated it to students and visitors. In fact, it wasn't until March 18th, 1888, that Ferraris published his first paper about using more than one phase in an AC motor or generator. Ferraris was then disturbed to learn that just two months later, Nikola Tesla's patent for a two-phase motor and generator was granted without mentioning Ferraris at all. In December, 1888, a scientist wrote an article which stated that the Tesla motor was based on the ideas invented by Professor Ferraris of Turin. This article was translated into English and published in an American magazine in February of 1889 
which is why Tesla retorted in June 1889 that it was just one of the most curious coincidences that Professor Ferraris not only came independently to the same theoretical results, but in a manner identical almost to the smallest detail. But how did Tesla come up with the idea of using more than one phase of AC to make a motor? That's the kind of difficult question to answer and it all has to do with Tesla's personality. See, Tesla liked to say that his inspirations came fully formed in his head and he never needed to experiment because, quote, there has not been a single solitary experiment which did not come out exactly as I thought it would. And this invention only came from thinking about it a lot and reciting poetry in the park. However, in lawsuits, Tesla talked a lot about Arago's wheel or Arago's rotations. So let me talk about how Arago's wheel could have inspired the two-phase motor and generator. Arago's wheel was invented in 1824 when a French scientist named Francois Arago discovered that a spinning copper wheel could spin a nearby magnet with no battery involved, even though copper is non-magnetic. If I conduct this experiment in a similar fashion to Mr. Arago, I can rotate the disc and you'll note that the magnets follow. The following year in 1825, English scientists Charles Babbage and John Herschel made a reverse Arago's wheel where they spun a permanent magnet under a copper wheel, which caused the copper wheel to spin in sympathy. Rotate the magnets and see what happens to the disc. It follows and then is quickly damped. Fast forward to June of 1879, when an English scientist named Walter Bailey was inspired by the reverse Arago's wheel to make a copper wheel spin with four stationary electromagnets by using a homemade mechanical device to direct the current called a commutator so that the current alternated between the two electromagnets. Although you could argue this was a two-phase motor, it wasn't really a true two-phase motor as it just directed the direct current between the two electromagnets. Also, it was a little toy about two inches wide and four inches tall. The next year, 1880, a French scientist named Marcel de Prez was inspired by Bailey to make a more robust motor that used a similar commutator to Bailey's to electrify a rotor, the part that spins. Tesla never admitted he read about any of these discoveries. However, when he filed for his patent in September of 1887, he did write that, quote, I am aware that it is not new to produce the rotations of a motor by intermittently shifting the poles of one of its elements. However, Tesla correctly added that the previous systems, aside from Ferraris's, which he seemed unaware of, used mechanical appliances, where only the direction, not the strength of the current, changed. In 1900, a judge ruled in favor of Tesla in a court case and mentioned Arago's wheel and Bailey, Deprez, and others, and concluded that, quote, it remains to the genius of Tesla to transform the toy of Arago into the engine of power. If Tesla was inspired by Bailey and Deprez and their Arago's wheels, then Tesla's device was a significant advance and is worthy of our admiration and respect. However, I think his accomplishment is slightly marred by the fact that he didn't acknowledge anyone who came before him and didn't give credit where it was due. So that is why Nikola Tesla and Galileo Ferraris conceived of the idea of two-phase electricity and the two-phase motor. So a little comment. If you've watched the last video about three-phase current, you might be a little confused right now because at the end of that video, I promised that this video would be a biography of the life and work of Charles Steinmetz, and I offered my two-phase video that you just saw as an incentive to join my email list. And then two things happened. The first thing was that after I published my three-phase video, my YouTube page went crazy. It went really well. I went from about 25,000 views per month to over 2 million views. And everyone told me that I needed to put a, a new video and fast. But I love Charles Steinmetz and his story just need the time to really delve into it. 
So I was just determined I was just going to work on that and get that out for you. And then the second thing happened, which was not so pleasant, and that my daughter and I got breakthrough COVID. And I'm feeling okay, just tired and cranky. And my nine-year-old daughter is also tired and cranky. But also my son and my husband have not gotten COVID, so we're staying away from them, which means I do not have access to much of my materials and the computer I work on and the like. So I was thinking about all of this and it occurred to me that my video about Two-Phase was really interesting and worth viewing. And I hope you agree. And as a new incentive to get you to join my email list, I'm going to do what I was planning on doing before anyway, which is as soon as I have access to my computer, I will give you a chapter of my book that I remove from the book, which is on the history of the cathode ray and the x-ray and all the way up to the discovery of the electron. And bits and pieces of it are still in the book and bits and pieces of it will be in future books. But I think it's still interesting and it'll be fun to get it ahead of time. So that is my new reward if you join my email list or if you become one of my patrons. And thank you patrons. So stay safe out there. I will try to do the same. Blech. Fast forward to June 1879. 79, yeah. Fast forward to 